What's up everybody, Alex here. Welcome back to another video. It's contest time and this time I am participating in a contest for JT at JT's Record Room. Now chances are if you're watching this you are well aware of JT's Record Room who's celebrating 3,000 subscribers. 3,000! which is outstanding. Uh, JT's got an awesome channel, a ton of amazing vinyl hauls, finds that he's able to find in like a, you know, Chinese restaurant basement in the middle of Odessa or some wild place. So, um, you know, he's just got a great channel and uh, he's having a contest celebrating 3,000 subscribers. So uh, JT, congratulations and I hope you like the contest. It's a pretty simple contest. It's nice and easy, just a few Questions. The first is about shouting out a channel, and the channel that I want to shout out is Jack the Music Guy. Uh, Jack's a young kid. I think he just graduated high school maybe um, this past year, but he's got an old soul, man. I mean, he's always jumping in comments and in live chats, talking about music, um, recent album he, albums he's been listening to. He's a huge fan of the Smiths. He loves the Beatles. He loves all the classic bands, and he's just uh, one of the nicest guys. So um, go support Jack. He's got about 125-ish or so subscribers. So um, check him out. He's great. And then the next part is going to be uh, a, a recommendation, make an album recommendation, but I'll do that uh, at the end. The main part of the contest is to show three records uh, with food. And listen, listen. I like food, okay? So that surprises no one. Um, but because I like food so much, and I'm trying to be better, my three albums are going to reflect a little bit of a food theme, and that is fruits and vegetables, things that I don't get enough of. And so I'm going to try to make it work the best I can with showing these records. So yeah, easy contest. Show some records with food on it. I went the fruit and veggie route. So uh, first one, a very obvious one, but uh, that's okay. Uh, Maybe the most obvious one, but I haven't seen a ton of people show it, but I also haven't watched a ton of the videos, so there's that. 1967, Velvet Underground, and Nico. Now, of course, this is not an original. God, I wish it was, but this was like a mid-80s reissue, maybe. Um, you know, Velvet Underground's such an interesting, you know, band, right? Like, the, the idea was that no one really cared about these records when they came out. You know, who knows how well they've aged. I mean, those are questions that a lot of people ask. But, you know, what's the one comment of, although this record only sold 10,000 copies, 10,000 of those people all started bands, right? So I've grown to love this record a lot, specifically the Nico songs. Um, I love Sunday Morning. Uh, what a great song. What a perfect way to start off the album. I love Heroin. What a song that is. Um, there, there's some great stuff on here, uh, for sure. And I do find myself liking the Nico tracks a lot. I am a fan of the Velvet Underground. Still not crazy about White Light, White Heat, just because it's a little bit too noise garagey for me. But I think this is a perfect mix of some of that noisy type stuff mixed with just some amazing, uh, melodies and singing from Nico. So yeah, the classic banana. Um, let's go from banana to a carrot. And in this... Actually, this is fascinating. In this case, the carrot represents an apple. Okay, so here we go. 1973, Badfinger's Ass. Uh, those who know me know Badfinger's one of my favorite bands of all time. This was the last record they did for Apple Records. Um, the designer here is the same person who did, um, shoot, what is his name? Did I just pull it up? Maybe not. Is it up? Um, b -b 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 Peter Corston, who's the same person who did Physical Graffiti and uh, some girls, and tattoo you by the stones. In this case, I believe the band is supposed to represent the donkey. They are the ass in this situation, and the dangling carrot represents Apple and some of the promises that were made to them. So the last record put out on Apple Records. This was the follow-up to Straight Up, which is one of my favorite records of all time, and pretty much what most people would consider, you know, Badfinger's greatest record. And this, to me, although I really, really like this record, was kind of a disappointment following up from Straight Up. And most of it is because Pete Hammett only has two tracks on here. The rest are made up by um, everybody else. But he opens the record and he closes the record. To me, the two best tracks on here are Open It, Apple of My Eye, kind of explains what's going on. And then Timeless, which closes the album and is one of the best Bad Finger tracks of all time. This long, epic, beautiful, thematic song. So yeah, Ass on Apple... Looking at the carrot. There you go. Also in 1973, and also within that power pop vein, although instead of Brit power pop, we're going to go to American power pop by way of up the street, straight up I-71 to Cleveland with the Raspberries' third record, 
<laughs> side three. I was like, what is it? Side three, three sides live, Genesis. Okay, so yeah, this was the third record. They would put out one more with Eric Carmen on here, but I love the first, I mean, really four. Those Raspberry records with Eric Carmen are just amazing, perfect, early, mid-70s power pop all the way. This was a cool sort of design because the actual design itself is sort of like this. That's kind of just how it came. You know, that's why I put the cardboard in the back there. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you don't know the raspberries, but you like that early sort of power pop sound, this is pretty schmaltzy, but it's also, you know, got some good guitar work in it. Just amazing hooks, harmonies, all that good stuff. Side three from the raspberries. Those are my three fruit and veggie themes. Um, and then the other point is to make a recommendation, just some kind of album recommendation. I'm gonna recommend this. The soul funk people out there are gonna know this record, but maybe the rock people who haven't really dabbled into soul or funk or any type of stuff as much might not be familiar, but there's a great tie-in based on this person's career. The record I'm going to recommend is Them Changes by Buddy Miles, 1970. So Buddy Miles, part of the electric flag, uh, would go on to join Jimi Hendrix's group. He's on Electric Ladyland. He's also was part of the band of Gypsies. And then obviously the Buddy Miles group. But this record is incredible. First of all, let's just take a moment to appreciate what a cover that is. Hell yeah. What a badass. That's a fro right there. Um, just an absolute amazing, amazing. It's a rock record, but with all this funk and soul kind of combined it to me, the highlight, it's both covers and originals, but to me, he does such, such a badass version of Down by the River by Neil Young on here that just absolutely smokes. There's a ton of great stuff on here all the way around, but to me, that is such a huge highlight. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly inexpensive inex or pretty accessible, inexpensive record. If you see it out there, find it, maybe 10, 15 bucks, something like that. Um, this record absolutely smokes, and that is what I am recommending. So there you go. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate you all. JT, again, uh, congratulations on 3,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. Go check out JT and go check out Jack uh, at Jack's Music Guy. Jack the Music Guy. There it is. And uh, have a good weekend. See you soon. Bye now.